I'm pleased to be with the company Allied Restoration. They're based in California. We have with us Dana Almaraz and Tim Bauer. How are you both today? Great, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing okay. Now, I'm not in California, uh, so but don't have that nice weather. You have, I think you're Southern California? Yes, sir. Beautiful right. Southern California. Well, good to have you both here to talk about GBACSAR accreditation for facilities. Uh, let's start with your company. Tell us a little bit about Allied Restoration, your facility, and what you do for your clients. Yeah, so Allied Restoration, so we are a restoration company, so we do fire, water, mold, um, and we're kind of branching out as well into contents. So kind of your one-stop shop, anything that you need for your home, we've got you. Um, and so with our facility, we just recently got it this year, which was really exciting for us. Uh, we were previously in a, a smaller um, office, but now uh, we are in a uh, just under 15,000 square foot warehouse. Uh, so it's split into two different sections. We have um, just under uh, 5,000 square feet of warehouse and uh, just about 8,000 square foot of office. So we have our office staff that's in there and then our warehouse as well. Um, so excited to be there, excited to expand and, you know, excited to be a part of GBAC and, uh, and put that towards our um, skills that we have. Well, welcome to our program. And Dana, you are the systems analyst with the company? Yeah. So um, I do, like you said, systems analyst. I get into every single position and I make sure that every position has a book that they can work off of as far as what they can, what they do, um, how to work more efficiently, and um, just trying to make sure that we're working as well as we can with the systems that we have and creating new ones, changing old ones, and making sure we're, we're as efficient as possible. Sounds like an important job. And Tim, you're the, what is your position with the company? So I'm the senior vice president with the company and, and most of my responsibilities have to do with taking a look at customer experience and what that's like for not only the customers whose homes and businesses we may be working in, but also the people that are referring us and counting on us to do a good job, like insurance professionals, particularly insurance brokers and high net worth insurance business managers people that are involved in the process from start to finish with us. Okay, so Tim, let's talk about that. Uh, with what you do with, with Allied, your facility decided to, your company decided to invest in GBACSAR accreditation, and it's because of your clientele, I believe. Tell us about that. Yeah, so with our clients, we work with the rich and the famous, and, and uh, they're a very demanding and incredible customer to work with. And we realized that while a lot of GBAC accredited facilities are, are having a huge influx of visitors, we were more concerned about the people leaving our facility and where they were going. So on a day-to-day -day basis, when one of our technicians comes into the workplace, we wanted to make sure that before they left us to go to a homeowner's home, that we were doing everything we could to keep them safe, in particular, while we're working inside of this new normal. And a story that, that I like to talk about is in the early days of the pandemic, I had received a recommendation to an actor who lived uh, in a beachfront community who had been observing all of, the, all of the recommendations from both the CDC and other science-based organizations about quarantining and sheltering in place. And they had a water loss in their child's playroom. And the question that he asked is, We've been safe, we've been, we've been alone, we've been quarantining. How do I know that I'm safe inviting your workers into my home where my children play? Can't I just leave this water damage in the corner until COVID-19 ends, until everything is safe and we can all come out? And so we had to have a difficult conversation about what the home would end up looking like if the water damage was left untreated for months and months. And so we, we made a game plan and we, we expressed to him all of the measures that we were taking. And, and to be quite honest, thank God for GBAC and, and, and uh, this process, because we had to start thinking through those problems early on. We had to start addressing those questions. What are we going to do to minimize the spread of, of COVID within our facility and future pandemics and future infectious diseases? And so by, by going through these processes, we're able to communicate with confidence why our customers can feel safe allowing our workers to enter their homes. Very unique. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, Dana, maybe we'll go to you on this question. What will this mean for the staff and, and those you service from your, from your perspective? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, 
early on in the pandemic, you know, we had just gotten the facility. So we had all started working there and there was a lot of fear around, you know, how are you guys keeping this clean? Like, what are we going to do? Do we have to wipe down every day? You know, and so we started to see and recognize within our own staff that there is this uncertainty, even with us, and how can we protect them? So when um, we were introduced to GVAC and, and wanting to get accredited, it was, it was an immediate, of course, because we want to keep our staff safe, who's there every single day. Um, as well as Tim said, you know, keeping the tech safe when they go out. Um, and it just means that we can serve our customers more. Service is a huge part of what our specific company values. Um, and a lot of, you know, what Tim's position is as well. And if we can do things that can better serve our customers and help them to feel safer, we'll do it 100% no matter the cost. So um, it meant a lot for our staff, you know, them hearing from us that we're investing in this program and getting accredited. Um, it really brought a lot of confidence and, and it created a, a really amazing culture for us as well. Um, just kind of showing our employees we care about you guys and we care about your safety and your families and, and having you here, we're going to make sure you're safe. Mm -hmm. So um, when you started the process, you learned there were 20 elements you had to research and adapt to. Do any of those stand out as more challenging than others? You know, to be completely honest, Jeff, when, when we looked at this list, it was like some of these items, and, and I, I, I feel bad, but I, I'm gonna get a little bit, a little bit naked here uh, on Zoom and express that some of these things we hadn't fully fleshed out or considered. We're a growing company. So we're, we're only about 12 years old, and uh, you know, which is a monumental thing. I learned this week that uh, less than half a percent percent of businesses that start last a decade, which is crazy to hear. But so we're, we're, we're old, but young, right? And so as we've grown, you know, starting off as a $0 company, and now, you know, being a, a $12 million a year organization, uh, we have started to develop systems and procedures for all kinds of things. But we were lagging in this area as we started to go into this pandemic. And we realized that some of the questions and some of the topics that we had to cover required us to get involved with things like, what are we going to do if there's, there's active shooters on site? And this is a question that we all have responsibility to answer. As Californians, we can tell you, we don't prepare for disasters the same way as the rest of the country, right? Parts of the Southeast, you're having tornadoes, you're having hurricanes. People are used to dealing with these traumas. Our biggest events are, are earthquakes and wildfires, and we don't get a lot of warning for those events. So we're notorious at procrastination. We were forced to address these areas uh, of our business and develop standard operating procedures, which is one of the big ones for us, uh, developing, developing these SOPs for events like, like a pandemic outbreak, like an active shooter, like you know somebody dying in the workplace. These are our real risks that could happen. Thank God haven't in our facility. But now because we've gone through this, we know what to do if, if heaven forbid, we're faced with these predicaments. And Dana, I'm sure we, we, we broke out parts of this. I'd love to hear from Dana. I know there are parts yeah. that you had to deal with as well that were incredibly stressful for you. So originally um, this was brought to me uh, by our, our CEO and um, he said, uh, hey, you know, get us accredited. I'm expecting this to take about two weeks. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, let, let me take a look at it. And I looked at it, I was immediately overwhelmed. I was thinking there's no way in two weeks, I alone, you know, can do this. And starting to read through it, you guys encourage, you know, a committee, you know, having people and responsibilities and authorities. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm, that's what we're going to do. So we created a committee of about four people and we sat down and we gave elements to everybody that kind of fit their special niche. Uh, for me, standard operating procedures, no brainer. I've got it. Uh, for inventory, you know, our, our emergency services coordinator was like a hundred percent, I can do it. So we saw a lot of elements fitting into place and, and our committee was made up of people who were, who have the um, experience to create those documents because they already have the knowledge. They just need to put it on paper. So um, I'm grateful for our committee and the experience that they have in being able to complete this in the amount of time that we did. Uh, but originally very overwhelming, uh, but does, we enjoy the, the stretching. We enjoy the growth. And so um, it was a great experience and, and a little hard, but, we got there, so it was great. Yeah, well, thank you for your honesty. It's good to hear um, your, your success story on how you approached it and your plan to get it done. So 
we talked about the challenges. Was there anything in the 20 elements that you're like, oh, we got this? No problem. You know, I think, uh, so one, one thing that was a slam dunk for us was how to deal with, uh, with an outbreak, because by the time we really got into the, the depths of this, we had started doing COVID-19 disinfection inside of other facilities. So when you ask us to come up with a scope of work or how we would handle it, it's like, oh, you know, you're, you're basically asking a, uh, a mechanic, how would you deal with it if your car broke? It's like, oh yeah, I'm ready for that part. That's easy, you know? Uh, so in terms of disinfection, uh, disinfection efforts, that was something that we were very well versed on as a professional disinfection company. Uh, we've, we've made the pivot and we made that pivot early on uh, to be able to actually disinfect facilities. Uh, so we, we knew exactly what we were looking at in terms of how to disinfect our own facility. So related to that question, here's another one. Is there something now that you're doing that you didn't do previously, but you think you're, you're going to keep on doing it in the future as part of the program? You know, one thing I want to, I do want to say is something Dana brought up just a moment ago was involving multiple layers of, professional opinions inside of these systems and procedures. That is something that GBAC recommended, uh, that the, the accreditation uh, process recommended. And it was, to Dana's credit, an incredibly wise move. We had high level, mid-level, and bottom level in terms of uh, power within the organization. We had people with zero direct reports. And then, of course, I was a part of the committee as well as the, the second in line in the company. So having different mindsets inside of a, a meeting like this and a collaboration opportunity is something that we'll definitely continue to do and, and a credit uh, to the, the GBAC organization for helping us with that was really a remarkable thing. Uh, the other thing is that um, this document is a living, breathing document, right? And so it's forced us to continue to revisit these policies and procedures and really get them into our into our mindset and into our vernacular for our entire tribe. Mm -hmm. So if my last question is this, if another organization were to approach either one of you and say, should we do GBAC star accreditation? What would you tell them? I'd say yes. Um, just like the things we've been talking about, it encourages you to think outside the box, to care more for your employees, to care for those who come into your facility. Um, it's difficult, but it's necessary. You know, these things, like Tim had said earlier, we never had even really explored. There were some things that we hadn't really touched on. Um, but in our day and age, in this time, it's necessary for you to be thinking about those things, to have these things in place instead of being a company that is um, reactionary, you know, it's, it's important right now to be proactive. You wanna think before these things happen and you wanna make sure that your, your stuff is in place. So um, I would say, don't even think twice and just to go for it. Yeah, and I, I'll say Jeff, that uh, in disaster restoration, we're oftentimes the second responders, right? The fire department shows up, they put the fire out, and then the customer looks around and, and sees a burnt down house and they don't know what to do next. We are, we are the company, we are the, the, the industry that walks in and looks at a homeowner in the face of one of the greatest tragedies that they will ever endure. And we're the first person that really gets to look them in the eye and say, everything's gonna be okay. Accreditation like this lets you look at your employees and tell them the same thing that regardless of what happens, be it pandemic, active shooter, disaster, we've got you and everything's going to be okay. We have a system, we have a procedure, we've thought these things out. And if you're prepared, you don't have to be afraid. And that's really one of the big things that we have to tell our employees, our, our customers, our visitors, and, and the families of all of those people that everything's gonna be okay and we've got your back. Well, everything you both have shared today is proof why Allied Restoration is a success story. I don't suppose you do house calls in Ohio. So <laughs> we'll... We can recommend. <laughs> Got great companies out there, for sure. I love Ohio. It's a great place to visit, but yeah. not yet. Well, keep doing what you're doing, and your, your employees and your clients appreciate your efforts. Thank you.